In my previous video, we have presented overview of the flywheel. We understood that wherever there is a fluctuation, either in the power input or in the power output, we will be needing a flywheel. Flywheel after all stores the energy in the form of kinetic energy. So more the fluctuation, bigger will be the flywheel. The capacity to store energy by a flywheel depends on its mass moment of inertia. For a given application, be it IC engine or a punching press, how we should do the flywheel design. Then what is the role of turning moment diagram in the design of the flywheel? Yes, in this video, we are going to talk about energy stored in a flywheel, the role of a turning moment diagram in designing a flywheel. These basic concepts are very much useful while solving all application-based numerical problems. Are you ready? Yes, let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jayakumar. I am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. If this is your first time and not yet subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell icon so that to get notified all my forthcoming brand new videos. You can watch all my previous lecture videos using the links given in the description below. These are the various learning outcomes. To start with, we must be knowing some prerequisite concepts. So these are the key takeaways of the earlier lecture, which one must be knowing before proceeding further. We have presented a turning moment diagram for a single cylinder four stroke engine. As you could see there, the input torque produced by the engine is very fluctuating, whereas the output torque required by the application is constant, which we call as a T mean. So our aim is to reduce the fluctuation of this turning moment or fluctuations in the speed. For that purpose, we are introducing the flywheel. As you could see the red line, how the earlier fluctuation has come down, has smoothened after the introduction of the flywheel. This is the concept we have discussed in our previous class. So design of flywheel is directly connected with the turning moment diagram. Turning moment diagram using which we can determine mean resisting torque, T mean value. Once we know the T mean value, we can determine maximum fluctuation of energy. For these two things, turning moment diagrams are used. Once we know maximum fluctuation of energy, one can easily design the flywheel. Then uh, let us talk turning moment diagram in detail. Just for understanding, I am going to draw now turning moment diagram for a single cylinder double acting steam engine. As you could see, steam exerts thrust on the piston which results into the rotation of the crank and the crankshaft. So when piston moves from one extreme end to another extreme end, by then crank will be covering off rotation. So zero degree to 180 degree, we will be having the out stroke. Immediately, the return stroke will be followed, which we call it as a in stroke from 180 degree to 360 degree. And the cycle keeps repeating. So the very important thing is the term cycle. So at what crank angle the cycle keeps repeating? In this case, after every 360 degree of crank rotation or 2 pi radians, the cycle repeats. Now we can draw a turning moment diagram easily. It will look like this. This is a kind of a curve. 0 to pi, that is an outstroke. Then from pi to 2 pi, 180 degree to 360 degree, it is an in-stroke, return stroke. There you are. The cycle will be keep on repeating. That's what I have shown by that dotted lines. So it is not necessary to draw 
so many cycles. So it's enough for me to draw turning moment diagram for a cycle, right? Yes. The first purpose is to find mean resisting torque. Before going to that, let me introduce a term known as work done per cycle. If you take linear motion, what is the work done? Force applied along the direction of motion multiplied by the displacement of the body. Am I right? For angular motion, I will be replacing the term force with torque. Displacement with angular displacement, theta. So work done in case of flywheel or crankshaft is T into theta. Sometimes the torque values will be given in the form of curve, in the form of equation over a crank angle. Then how can I find the work done? Work done per cycle can be determined by calculating area under the curve. There you are. The shaded area, if I know, that is equal to work done per cycle. What about the turning moment required by the application? Yes, there you are. That horizontal red line represents constant application torque requirement. Work done by application is again area under the curve. In this case, it is a rectangular box. Area of the rectangle, which is nothing but P mean multiplied by 2 pi will give us the work done required per cycle for an application. It's so simple. There are only two things. One is work done per cycle developed by the engine. Another one is work done per cycle required by the application. That's all. Both must be equal. Then it will be functioning smooth. Am I right? Yes. First, let us find work done per cycle developed by the engine. We've already discussed. Area of that cow will give as the work done developed by the engine per cycle. What about work done required by an application? I am going to have the T mean line multiplied by 2 pi. I will get work done required per cycle. Ideally speaking, at the end of each cycle, there should not be any extra or lesser energy stored by the flywheel. That's what we have discussed in our earlier lecture. At the end of the each cycle, energy stored by a flywheel should have been supplied to other cycle. That means work then developed by the engine must be equal to work done required by the application per cycle. Both must be equal. So I'm equating both of them. So T mean into theta is equal to area O A B C D E F G H. From that, I can find T mean value. There you are. T mean is equal to area under the curve divided by crank angle for a cycle. That's it. Excellent. Right. As we have said, by using the turning moment diagram, we are going to determine maximum fluctuation of energy, delta E. The variation of energy above and below T mean line is known as fluctuation of energy. At one point, energy stored by the flywheel will be maximum. And at another point, energy of the flywheel will be minimum. So the difference between maximum energy and the minimum energy is known as maximum fluctuation of energy, which is represented as delta E. You will understand the term much better with a diagram. There are only two curves. One is torque on the crankshaft line, T line. Another one is T mean, mean resisting torque. Now, take a crank position, say point B. At point B, T value will be greater than the T mean value. In other words, T minus T mean is positive. That means engine develops energy more than the application requirement, T mean. Flywheel will start storing those excess energy. When flywheel starts storing the energy in the form of kinetic energy, the flywheel's speed will be increasing. Now, on the contrary, 
let us take the point b dash when it is at b dash t value will be lesser than t mean value at that instant fly will will start supplying the energy stored when fly will supplies the energy its speed will be decreasing am i right so as you could see there at all these points speed of the fly wheel is different therefore at t theta diagram at one point energy will be maximum at another point energy will be minimum now shall i illustrate a determination of delta e for the same diagram yes assume that this is the turning moment diagram karun given so in order to find maximum energy and minimum energy i will find energy at all intersection points now is it clear let a1 a2 a3 a4 and a5 be the area below and above mean torque line as shown in the diagram shall we yes excellent i have taken at crank position and fly wheel energy at crank position o energy required is e at a so e minus a1 at point c energy at a plus c2 at point e energy at c minus a3 because it's a deficient energy at e plus excess energy a4 energy at q will be equal to energy at p which will be equal to e why the same cycle is going to be repeated if we put some numerical values to these areas we will be getting different values here at one point energy will be minimum assume say at point a energy is minimum similarly at another intersection point the value of the energy will be maximum say i am assuming at point g here uh, energy is maximum so we got one maximum energy and minimum energy so now there you are we can determine delta e which is nothing but maximum energy minus minimum energy that's one concept known as coefficient of fluctuation of energy it says that it is the ratio between maximum fluctuation of energy delta e to the work done per cycle right then how we have found maximum fluctuation of energy when energy varies obviously the speed varies so the maximum speed minus minimum speed is what we call maximum fluctuation of speed delta s similar to delta e is that clear yes this term is very important in the design of fly wheel which is known as coefficient of fluctuation of speed it says it is the ratio between maximum fluctuation of speed to the mean speed if i know n1 and n2 how can i find mean speed let me denote mean speed by n n is equal to n1 plus n2 by 2 will give you the mean speed once i know that i can very well find the cs value we must be getting this formula so cs value depends on application in the problem cs value will be given in different ways these are very important inputs for you which would be very useful while solving numerical problems is that clear now let us move on to one important and interesting concept namely energy stored in a fly wheel this is a typical fly wheel please understand fly wheel construction varies from application to application fly wheel in an ic engine is different fly wheel for a punching press application is different but essentially the concept remains same let m be the mass of the fly wheel k radius of gyration of the fly wheel the mass moment of inertia is the one which determines the energy stored by the fly wheel we know that so i is the mass moment of inertia of the fly wheel about 
the perpendicular axis which is passing through its axis of rotation i is equal to m k square then n1 n2 maximum and minimum speeds during the cycle in an rpm omega 1 omega 2 maximum and minimum angular velocities of flywheel during the cycle mean speed i can determine n1 by n2 by 2 mean angular velocity i can easily determine omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 cs coefficient of fluctuation of speed ratio between maximum fluctuation of speed divided by mean speed is it clear these are the notations we must be very clear right shall i derive one small equation we know that flywheel stores energy in which form exactly it stores in the form of kinetic energy for a linear motion what is the formula for kinetic energy of mv square what is the same equation of kinetic energy for rotational motion instead of mass it will become mass moment of inertia instead of linear velocity it will become angular velocity therefore energy stored by a flywheel of i omega square clear then we know that at one point of time energy stored will be maximum so maximum energy stored by a flywheel let me call it as e1 so how this formula would change of mass moment of inertia remain same so omega 1 square omega 1 is the maximum angular speed of the flywheel in speed of the flywheel is maximum energy stored will be maximum so this is the formula same way i need to determine minimum energy stored by a flywheel yeah minimum energy stored by the flywheel as half i omega 2 square what is my aim my aim is to find maximum fluctuation of energy so from equation 1 and 2 i could write like this can i simplify them right yes so somehow i want this equation to be brought into my you know derivation okay so what can i do now i am multiplying omega in both numerator and denominator how could i change i omega 1 plus omega 2 by 2 what is that mean speed mean angular speed omega 1 minus omega 2 divided by omega what is that cs i omega square cs excellent this is the equation for energy stored by the flywheel so i can write this delta e in different ways this is one formula i omega square cs what is i i is mk square omega square cs am i right i omega square equal to 2 into e so i can write 2 e cs now sometimes we need to know dimensions of the flywheel ring these are the notation ideally speaking this should be studied under machine design course but sometimes in dynamics of machine subject also some university questions are being asked to determine various dimensions of the flywheel so i am just giving you the formula directly so by using uh, these equations we can determine dimensions of the flywheel ring okay what are the key takeaways from this lecture these are the key takeaways using all these relations we are going to solve numerical problems in 
our forthcoming videos. Hi Bob, you found this video useful. If so, like this video, share to your friends and subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Take care. Bye.